What's up, my Madden Rebuild Warriors? My name is David. This is the 18 Rebuild Slow Sim League. This is week four recap. Uh, we're going to be doing the podcast a little bit different. Um, since it's week four, well, since week four is done, uh, we're going to be doing more of like a quarter way through the season kind of review for the stats and the awards and best rookies and stuff like that. So we're just going to do in this podcast. We'll look at uh, the results of week four, and then we're going to do the preview of week five. All in one video, and then the stats and everything else. Uh, that'll be in a separate video. Because I think uh, standings and all that stuff require a different attention for where we stand four weeks into the season. Um, as you can see, our Cardinals played on Thursday Night Football. Kyler Murray looking decent. Uh, I can't wait to see what he's thrown on the season as far as interceptions. I think he's thrown like one. But they're in they're doing very well. They're in the uh, Ravens playbook. Kyler Murray starting his legs going. Cam Akers having a decent game. Jalen Wright right there. And we made a move here. We put Leggett at the number one spot and he caught two touchdowns. Still not getting the yards. But maybe they'll come. Jalari. Sheldon Rankins moved up in the depth chart for now. Buda Baker, I believe, was moved out of the sub linebacker spot. I, I can't remember. This is a great game. Two unbeatens. Anthony Richardson, you know, he's in the Colts playbook. That's a tough stop right there. Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor going for three touchdowns. Gainwell got two. And Cabinda. Cabin. Whatever his name is. He's got a rushing touchdown. Uh, this is a really good game. I wonder if this would have been a different result had it been in Jacksonville. But... Yeah. Dude, the Colts are the Colts are looking good right now. But that Jags defense. I know they gave up the points, but they get they get points. I mean they get sacks the game a couple games before they got turnovers and all the all the like. And what a game here. Drake made it look great, but we made some great changes here. He was they were in the uh, Jacksonville playbook, and Mooney's having a great season. Um, Tyquan Thornton, so what if he's fast, man? We I think if why if uh, the Patriots are looking to make a move to so get another wide receiver sure but the big change was on defense we moved them to what the green bay playbook on defense and eh, eh, you know okay but this is where <laughs> one two three four five six six interceptions on one aaron Rodgers, 40 years old jabril peppers I mean, he should get an award this week, right? You know, interception. Maybe. Maybe it's Christian Gonzalez. I don't know. But nine tackles and an interception with a touchdown. Yeah. Jets got the big win last week. And then Aaron Rodgers threw up all of them. So. But Brees Hall returned and he had a big game. So that's kind of scary. I thought we we're the Patriots going to lose this game. You know, Madden uh, trying to get... Reese some of his yards up after missing all his games. Reese was looking good, but nope. Garrett Wilson, uh, after an amazing, pretty good start, falling off a little bit. I mean, for as good as the Cowboys playbook plays in. 
fast him. They just do not play well. Paddock, Michael Paddock Jr. had one good game in the beginning of the season. Just nothing. So, and as I mentioned before, the Cowboys picked up Darius Slayton from the Giants, but he, he's not playing because he's buried on the depth chart. Now, what a game here. You got to check this game out. You got to check out uh, two games off the bat for sure. The Colts, if you haven't already, the Colts and Jacksonville and the Falcons and Chiefs. Let's go with the Falcons first. Desmond Ritter, not the greatest thrower ever still, but he, he they're also in the Ravens playbook and Desmond Ritter is just fast. Kyle Pitts with a game. That's good to see. You know, I don't think the wide receivers really fit their scheme. But stinks. It is what it is. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. This is a revenge game for Willie Gay, I think, right? Regardless, let's go to the Chiefs here and show you what Patrick Mahomes did. He's amazing. Another four touchdowns. Love it. Kelsey, big games. Guy Moore is having a great season. Tony and Rasheed Rice are solid. Defense is all right. I mean, they had a they had to go to overtime for this one. Check it out. Our Tennessee Titans. Check this out. Um, we did not move the playbook around for the Titans, but we did make a move with Quez Watkins. We moved him up in the depth chart. We moved, um, where the hell is he? Traylon Burks down to fourth wide receiver. Higgins up to third. Allen in the slot. And... I mean, boom goes the dynamite. Higgins with two touchdowns and Quez with four for 130 and one. So that's seemingly what Jaden Daniel needed. I think to get going there. A lot of tackles from the team. Arden Key was moved up. I was trying to get the rookie in there or someone younger. And because Arden Key's so slow, but gets in second half. So. And I believe we made a move with the safeties. Yeah. We moved James Williams into the uh, sub linebacker spot and Ma, uh, Amani Hooker just out of there. And uh, he's just staying at safety spot. And uh, looks like it paid off. Looks like it paid off. The Packers, I mean, their playbook. We just saw what it did for the Patriots. Yeah, it's a good playbook. I'll be I'll be on some old playbooks coming soon. For Slosim for sure. Okay. Aaron Jones in check. Jordan Love in check. Alright, our Panthers taking on the undefeated Buccaneers. Bryce Young having a comeback here. Question mark. Averaging well over 300 yards a game. Two touchdowns here. Another team where we made a move. Got like three. He's got like two or three rushing touchdowns, I believe. Another man we got up in the lineup. A man that wanted to come here, McCall Harden. Making a little move in the depth chart. Seven for 160 and two touchdowns. Jermaine Burton got going again. Harris Marshall kind of fell back again. Hubbard with four for 30. And uh, Mingo, it's not really... If, we, if I make another move, it might be in a couple games, depending on what the results of this next game is, week five. But if I make another move here, it'll be swapping, I think, Burton and Mingo and see if that does anything. And then we might have perfected depth chart for them. Derek Brown's a beast. We got to resign him. Jeremy Chin, welcome back. But, uh, I mean, the Buccaneers are really solid. It was a just J.J. McCarthy didn't play well. Rashad White's still Rashad White. T. 
yeah. Yeah, guys. This playbook is all about Rashad White. And um, our defense just played very, very well. And, I mean, they have a tough defense, too. So, kudos to the Carolina Panthers. And then another must-watch game here. There's some really good must-watch games. And this is one, another one of them. I mean, of course, please watch the uh, our focus teams. See how they're doing. But this is a revenge game. You know, Justin Fields and the Bears, the whole, all the trades, Montez Sweat. Uh, but this is a great game. This is a great game. Dobbins is doing greatness. And, I mean, Caleb Williams and Dobb. Dobbins doing fairly well in this Miami playbook. Cole Komet, Brandon Rice, DJ Moore, Marvin Harrison. It's a great playbook. Sacks, they don't get sacks. So, if anything, we're going to make change in, in the future for the Bears is their defensive playbook. Justin Fields' best game in the Colts playbook, moving from the Eagles to the Colts. Wanted to get his legs more involved. Looks like that happened a little bit. Terry McLaurin having a game. Seven for 117 and three. Brian Robinson catching a bunch of catches. Uh, We added Mostert because they didn't have anyone in the 70s for third down back. And yeah, we added Mostert. Maybe we'll make another move with a trade uh, going forward. Xavier Worthy, I bumped him up to 99 speed, 99 acceleration after his wonderful performance at the combine, and it did nothing to help. <laughs> so there's that. And then here you go. Here's a here's a must-watch game as well. Unbeaten. Cleveland against Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, who needed a win for sure. Kind of felt this one coming, but just running all over. You gotta run over. You gotta run at these those uh those big defense events. And Eli Mitchell and Lamar Jackson get it done. Mark Andrews had a big game. This 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 looks like a Ravens stat line I've ever seen one offensively. Those games they have Lamar. Get just get it done. Sean Watson not having a good game. Didn't feed Chubb enough. Mika Ibuka. And not their best game offensively. I mean the uh, Ravens have a good ass team. Garrett's still getting after it, though. They still got after him. Evan Thompson have a good year. So, well, another game you got to watch. All right. Our Chargers at home. Not Justin Herbert's best game. Or Trey Von Henderson's best game. Mike Williams had a different decent game. Quentin Johnson. Stovars, just solid move the chains guy. The rookie finally getting his first interception. Um, Saints. Derek Carr. I'm just not a fan of Derek Carr. I think Mars hurt. We go. See six for minus one. And I guess he just bowed out. It's like I'm f this. I ain't going nowhere. Some Najee Harris got involved. Lave, T. Perry, Malik na- neighbors. Touchdowns, he's getting his touchdowns. Yeah, fantasy owners are not going to be happy with one Alvin Kamara. He's kind of toast in his career at this point, isn't he? Uh, another recommended game Miami at uh, Vegas. What am I thinking? Because I want to say, talk about how the Miami Dev. Miami Dolphins, 
Miami Dolphins are just rolling and they're undefeated after this one. Eight chains getting getting in a, in a touchdown run here. Four last game to this game. Tyreek 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 Hill's back. I need some water probably right now. No, kind of taken away from Jalen Waddle. But uh, yeah, this Miami team is scary right now. Offensively, for sure. And then you got guys like Jalen Ramsey on it. So, um, Baker going over 300 yards again in the in, uh, what two or four games? Trailer ever 10 for 130. Myers, Adams, Peace Corn. Is that another guy's name? Yeah, I mean this. This is a good game, I think. So you gotta check that out. I believe Miami had to come back at that. Uh, shocking result here. Undefeated 49ers going to Minnesota and lose. I did not see that coming. But this is how the Vikings have to win it is outscoring the other team because their defense can't stop anybody. Cousins going over 300 yards. Austin Eckler with three touchdowns. Not, not running the ball great. Yeah, it, and uh, I think I brought this up before, but isn't this the uh, the game that the 49ers choked last year against the Vikings? Joe Burrow. Goes into Denver against the winless Broncos. Throw through for a lot of yards. Really didn't have to. It was three touchdowns. of Dunes, Chase, Gadsden, Johnny Wilson with another touchdown. Mixon just you know controlling the ball. Pratt, Jackson Hill, Broncos. They're done. 150 for Russell Wilson. Got to be kidding me. Jaleel McLaughlin, though, having a game. Interesting. Very interesting. Focus team. Please check out the focus teams. Here's another revenge game, narrative game. Lions need that win on the road. Stonewall Montgomery's back. J-Mo. Getting in the box. Laporta. And they just... They don't know what to do with Amari Cooper and... Um, uh, St. Brown. They're not going yet. I wonder if they have not. Since they picked up Amari Cooper. Is um, Taylor Rapp. Revenge game. Two interceptions. Stafford, you know, throw him too many picks. Stafford does. Cooper Cups having a year. <laughs> He's having a year. All the old heads are re- are uh, contributing. Cup, Odell Beckham, Hopkins, Higby. Team's a little old, but they're getting it done a little bit. You know, they're hanging in. What is wrong with Houston? What is wrong with Houston? Excuse me. Bills got back on track, of course. They are the Bills. They are Josh Allen. You know, not the Chiefs, but you got a Josh Allen. You got you got stuff going on for you. Yeah, like Stroud, dude. What is, what's going on? Um, also, life without Nico Collins. He's hurt. We're missing like a, a bunch of people that are out. Defenders, offensive linemen. I mean, so they are banged up. Sophomore, they 
Madam was like, you're having a sophomore slump this year. We we like that narrative. So you're done. And then another shocking result, the primetime games doing what prime games time games do in uh in the regular world. Shocking development here. The Eagles getting their asses kicked. Jalen Hurts sucks. I mean, fix the offensive line, Philly. Please, for the love of God. A.J. Brown's best game of the year, I think. Six for 71. A.J. Brown's going nuts. He's probably calling into local talk radios now. Uh, just It's, it's got to be just absolute pandemonium in Philadelphia and in that locker room. The fans are just going to be booing and jumping off bridges. But I will warn you that this team is very good and just need a couple holes fixed. And if they get a top pick in next year's draft and fix the right holes, uh, they're back to being really dangerous again. So, you know, let's enjoy this year while they're down and out. 13 for 13 and 1. I mean, okay. Dante Johnson. I bet he abused Badberry. They're still shitty in the middle of the field, guarding tight ends. And then they have a tackle problem, and TJ Watt absolutely destroyed them. Joey Porter. Yep. So that is the rundown of the results of week four. And in the next part of this video, we'll go over the... What? Week five. Yeah. So there we go. All right. Be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at the top players from week four before we head into week five here. Justin Fields, even though he lost three pa uh, passing touchdowns, 44 yards on the ground, got him NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Also in a loss, lost uh, Mush. Marshawn Lattimore, if I could speak, two interceptions. Uh, he's now leading the league in interceptions. Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes. TJ Watt destroying the Eagles. Congratulations, boys. And then we have breaking news right here. This happened in real life, so I facilitated it in mm, our 2024 season. We're only entering week five, so I got it done. Um, the Broncos are sending Jerry Judy to the Browns, and he's now their number one wide receiver. So, uh, kind of uh, pushes Ibaka, or whatever his name is, <clears throat> from Ohio State, the rookie, down the depth chart, but it is what it is. All right, let's get into week five. Thursday night football kicks off with another one of our franchise focus teams. The LA Chargers take on, <clears throat> excuse me, the 0-4 Denver Broncos, who just traded away Jerry Judy, so good luck, guys. Um, you weren't very good before that either. Uh, don't choke Chargers. But, you know, the Chargers are going to charge. And the Broncos still have some key players on defense. So, can't wait for that one. And then we have a rematch already of the Eagles and the Cowboys. Uh, I did move around some things on the Eagles offensive line. Um, I think... It's Cam Jurgens is now the center, and that moves Steen to right guard. I don't know if that'll help, um, but they th that should have been, you know, that way on the depth chart anyway. So hopefully the uh, Eagles can pull the upset because they need to get some wins or they're facing just an awful season. And then the Buccaneers are looking to rebound. From their loss against, what was it, our Carolina Panthers? Against the New York Giants, who have fallen to th for three games in a row to losses after winning that game against the Pittsburgh Steelers on opening day uh, on that last you know minute touchdown. So, you know, let's see if Tampa Bay get, gets back on track. And then, I don't like these. I do and I don't. You know, two franchise focus teams facing off each other again. This time Arizona travels to Chicago. Chicago coming off that big win 
against another franchise focused team, the Commanders. And uh, Arizona's coming off a big win on Thursday Night Football, so they're well rested. Um, I'm very interested in this one, and you know, Bears are tied for first, so a lot going on there. And then we have a really good matchup here. Cleveland just lost to the Ravens, and Jacksonville just lost to the Colts, both 3-1 and one in uh, Cleveland. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this one. Let's see if who's going to rebound. And uh, I just expect a good game either way. Not seeing any blowouts here. So, uh, yeah, this one's definitely high on my list of must-watch must games. And then another 1 o'clock game here involving a franchise focus team, the Tennessee Titans, coming off a big win. Travel to Buffalo, who are coming off... Did they win? Was it two games ago? I think there was a first. Uh, I don't know. It's been it's been so long since they played, and I watched that game and remember so much football I've been watching. Uh, but anyway, when Tennessee wins, they score a lot of points. So we'll see if they can keep it going and finally get a winning streak. But it's very tough. Buffalo and Buffalo, and then <laughs> one o'clock game. You just got Miami, who's rolling with Tyreek now back for his second game. Tough one here for the Green Bay Packers. But that Green Bay defense does play pretty well. So, see what happens here. But Miami's just a machine. They are a machine. And we're going to get to the stats, like I said, in another video uh, going forward. But good luck, Green Bay. You got a machine there. And then uh, talking about another machine, another 4-0 team. 1 o'clock game. The Jets just can't get out of their way, especially Aaron Rodgers throwing just picks Left and right, travel to Indy, another home game for Indy. <clears throat> I don't know who, what 4-0 team is going to lose first, but I don't know if it's going to be Indy or Miami this week. So, just rolling, man. Can't wait to see this one as well. Well, can't wait to see the 4-0 teams play. You, you like watching good teams. And then... You got San Francisco traveling to Detroit. San Francisco just lost one to the Vikings, which was a complete upset. And then you have Detroit getting it back to 2-2 two and two in L.A. against the Rams in a revenge game. Um, this should be a good one. And I think they got Aiden Hutchinson back, so should expect this to be a close game. I, I know it helps at Detroit's home, so looking forward to that one. And then we have our franchise focus team, Carolina Panthers. Um, second place in the division, taking on a division opponent. You know, I don't like Tara Carr. I'm not super excited about this one for the fact that, you know, I, I think in my head that the batting gods uh, would like to see teams kind of battle around 500. So it might be leaning towards giving this one to New Orleans. You know, teams are very similar in overalls. But we're going to be watching that one. And then we actually have two franchise-focused teams playing each other. Uh, the Washington Commanders get back-to-back -back franchise focus games. Traveling to Cincinnati coming off a loss. So, I don't know. You know, Joey B, love him. I know a lot of people are going to be hating him now after what they saw at the UFC event. <laughs> oh, boy. The internet's crazy. But uh, yeah, this is uh, this is high on the on the ratings of must see TV. Not very high on my radar is uh, the AFC North sometimes. But you got Baltimore traveling to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is scrappy, but Baltimore are the reigning defending champs. Uh, coming off a big win, so could this be a letdown game against a scrappy team that just fights and claws? <clears throat> we'll see. But that division. Is always tough. You got the Bengals leading it right now, actually, over the Cleveland Browns. So let's we'll see if Baltimore can get back in a race. And then we have another game here where I don't know Atlanta. They they're they're scrappy too. Got some good overalls here on both sides of the ball, pretty evenly matched. But it is in Atlanta. Um, I'm gonna go with Atlanta here. I think. Even though Desmond Ritter can't throw the ball, they can absolutely run the ball. Both him and 
Dijon are just such a dynamic duo. So I like that game. Uh, hopefully this is a layup for our New England Patriots, a franchise focus team, traveling to the low and out Seattle Seahawks, a team I think that might be selling some players, particularly Kenneth Walker. And I have identified, along with the commanders, the Patriots as a potential landing spot for paying the big bucks a first round pick of some sort or high picks for Kenneth Walker. And then tough road here for the Houston Texas man. They just have a tough start to the season and they are not playing well. But Kansas City travels to Houston on Thursday night football. Not Thursday night football, Sunday night football. Talk about another machine. I am not sure if <laughs> any of these 4-0 teams are going to lose this week since they seemingly have layups record-wise. Uh, but that's a good Sunday night football game. And then to round out Monday night football, you have the Minnesota Vikings Coming off a big win, their first win of the season, traveling to L.A. to take on the Rams, who just came off a crushing loss to another NFC North opponent. Uh, I think I see the the Rams rebounding here, but this should be a good one. I believe these coordinators are very fam- or head coaches are very familiar with each other, running similar uh, systems. So you need the Rams to keep pace with the 49ers and depending what the Cardinals do, um, fight for second place right now and a wild card spot. So that is it. That are, that are the, That's the games, the games that we are expecting to see in week five. I will have a video coming out going over stats and standings. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me. Stats and standings as like a quarter way mark of the season. You know, what are the best rookies, stuff like that. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, we'll see you then. That actually might even be out. I don't know. I'm not sure which order I'm going to do. But anyway, please like and subscribe. Thank you for liking. Please, if you haven't already, before these Week 5 games get dropped on the weekend, go check out all the games uh, for Week 4. I marked. I tried to do my best to mark which ones I think were the best to watch. So please watch them. Give me some comments. Let me know how you're feeling about the league. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.